Welcome back, everybody, to The Back Nine. This is MPO Round One feature card coverage of the 2020 Throw the Road, presented by the Big Disc Boys. We're here at Tom Pierce Park in Grants Pass, Oregon, for a PDGA sanctioned C tier event. Today's coverage is brought to you by our sponsor, Above Ground Level Discs. Make sure to check them out if you're looking to take your game to the next level. I'm Jesse Spangler. And I'm Cameron McKilling, and we are Young Spang Commentary, back again to serve up some silky smooth commentary for you viewers at home. Jesse, how are we looking after the first 10 holes? Well, Cam, as you can see here, the feature card is tightly stacked after the first half of the first round, with Big Disc Boy Landon leading the card at 3 under. Fourth place isn't too far behind him, though, with Mo Lockwood holding down an even par. I don't know, Jesse. With only one birdie in the last five hole, looks like the feature card might still be asleep out there. Let's hope they wake up as we move out of the woods and into the sunlight for some of the longer and more open holes on the course. Speaking of which, hole 10, 310 foot par 3. Uh, you're going to see a lot of guys just crushing big backhand hydras here, trying to get out and around these trees that I am going to try and fly through with my drone, get a little... Uh, dangerous out here. Um, you will not see too many guys going through here. Most guys will, like I said, go up and over the top and crash back down leftwards at the basket down here in the green. That is the best way to avoid all those guardian trees. Yep, and that is the best way to have a look at an ace here. And uh, we'll see what Ryan does. Looks like he is going to go with the backhand. Haven't seen too many of those out of him today, especially not off the tee pad. You know that's the play if Ryan's pulling out a backhand. Uh, yeah, it looks like it dumped out a little early on him, though, before the trees, and he gets caught early, just at the edge of all those guardian trees down there. Mo going to go with the big backhand as well, it looks like. See how high up in the air he puts it. Maybe he can hit one of those BMX bikers over there. That's looking pretty good. Oh, yeah. Oh, and without that tree, he might have been even closer, but he's going to be inside the first circle, maybe 25, 30 feet out. He'll have a good look, just has to get around that tree there. And Landon throws his Explorer and he gets it high enough. Looking like he's going to take a run at the basket if he can get around all those trees. Oh, little oh, Skippy. Great shot. Oh yeah. And he uh, bounces off the uh, CTP flag over there that I believe was for the MA40 division. But that was a great drive nonetheless. Here's Mango with his Predator, it looks like. He won that at CTP out at Pacifica Doubles one Tuesday afternoon this summer. Yeah, and uh, looks like it's doing great for him here. Nice overstable flight for him. Going to crash down. Oh, and he's even closer than Landon. Look at that. CTP with the CTP disc. Ryan going to throw from outside the tree line here. And... Uh, he is kind of far out there, it looks like. I know Dylan was down by the basket. He's probably 40 feet or so. Oh, and he skips off the top and goes long. And uh, only less than 25 feet left, but he is going to have a lot of trees between him and the basket in a short amount of space. No change needed. That was nice. Just uh, sits it right in the back of the basket. Oh, yep, see, here's what I was talking about. Ryan's got a lot of stuff between him and the basket and not a lot of room this to work with. This is a tough lie. Going from the knee. Got to sneak it through the trees. Woo! But that was nice. Get that it. good left-hand fade and just finds a perfect little line through those trees like he's been seeming to do all day. Landon's going to tap out his bird. Trying to steal <laughs> the CTP from a different division. Right, classic. Even his disc wasn't even the closest to the pin on the card. <laughs> classic Landon. Here we are at the end of our first hole of the back nine. Three birdies and a par for Ryan. We are going to uh, see most of the card pick up an easy stroke here. All right, hole 11, a 400-foot par three. There's the one tree in the middle that we just flew over that somehow is always in play on this hole. Uh, it's just a straight hyzer. You'll see all these guys just trying to launch it out there and get with, within the circle for an easy birdie putt. Yeah, we'll see Mo throw it out there. Oh, and that's nice and high and out over those trees on the right side of the fairway. But he's getting some good fade. Oof, all right. he digs down Sticks. at the edge of the first circle, and he's going to have a look at a birdie there, folks. Landon with the Explorer again. 
Really likes that disc. Yep, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that is a, another, looks like a good drive from here. Yeah. Stable out. Oh, and yep, he <laughs> a fantastic drive. Yeah. Another birdie tap in for the boy there. Up next is Mango. Oh, rips it low and turns it out. And he's going to be deep right there, probably pin deep, but 40 feet or so to the right. He's going to have a hard little putt from behind that tree there. Uh, That's tough, slightly uphill. There's no will be on this hole. And Ryan yeah. going to go forehand, maybe forehand roller? Just oh, just forehand. forehand. And that turns into the tree right in the middle of the yeah, fairway. The one you were talking about, there it is. That is always in play for no reason. Yep, here he is throwing from underneath that dumb tree. Why are the tree? Shout out to our boy Nate. Um, look at that. He is uh, going to be putting for par there from the edge of the circle, though. Mango going from a knee here. Yeah, you can see doesn't have the height to give it a real run. So he's just going to lay it up here for a nice, easy tap in for his par. Smart play there. Boom, knocks it down for the bird. And that is a good putt from the edge of the circle. Oh, no. Ooh. Just short. Watching that three turn into a four quickly for Ryan, unfortunately. On the other end of the spectrum, though, Landon looking for a bird right here. That is a tester for me personally. Might be for him as well. Not today. That was solid. Very good play there from Landon. After a fantastic drive, to tap in his bogey a little forcefully, and there's Mango tapping out his par. At the end of hole 11, we are looking at two birdies, a par, and a bogey. Uh, easy spot to score some. Unfortunately, see someone pick up the bogey on the easy hole. Hole 12, 360 foot, par 3. Uh, you're going to see it's actually in the deep position today. The camera is going to stop at the short position. However, uh, it's still the same, similar play. Going to be a big hyzer route. But the basket will be tucked into those trees directly behind where we're looking right now. Probably another 50 feet in there. We're going to see Mo going with the big hyzer. Going to go out and around, hopefully get some uh, ground play towards that basket down there. Ooh, and he rips it. That is smashed. Oh, over, man. Over 400 feet there. Yeah, that was a great drive. I think it might have even beat your CTP from the battle video, which is hard to do. That was a fantastic drive for Mo. See if Landon can follow that up. Had some good height. Guardian trees. Oof. Doing their job. Yep, and he is going to be edge of the circle with a tester for his bird. See if Mango can get it all the way down there. No. It looks like he's turned over, over another shot. And he's going to be well off to the right, easily 150 feet from the basket. Lots of turnovers from Mango today. Mm-hmm. Mango turnovers. Not the tasty kind that you're looking for. No, no. I don't know how Mango turnover would taste, to be honest. And there's a forehand roller from Ryan. Another place where you don't see too many of those. And uh, he's going to be just outside the circle, but with a lot of trees left in the way. Quick flick from Mango. Right up next to the basket. Oh, and that was a good upshot after a bad drive. So he is going to be tapping in his par here for the scramble. Morrison looking for a bird. Probably going to hyzer around that tree there. Only one one thing in between him and the basket. And hyzers into the tree instead. Leaving uh, 15 feet or so for his putt for par. Could possibly have been aiming for the tree again. He was doing that earlier. Mm -hmm. You can see the basket tucked in right behind the tree is in the very middle of the frame. And he hits the trees framing the basket and uh, only makes it about 20 feet there. Going to have another 20 feet left here for his par putt. Nothing. 
Knocks it down. Skids it in. That's close. Land in for three. Nails it. There we go. Mo for two after a absolute crush of a drive. Birdie. Great birdie there, Mo. Three for three to start the back nine. Mm-hmm. Off to a hot start. Looks like someone heard our message about waking up. And there's Mango with his par. Hmm. And we're taking a look here at the scores from hole 12. We've got a solo bird for Mo Lockwood and three pars for the rest of the party. And we're moving on to hole 13. Hole 13 is a 348 foot par three in the short position. It is up, up these hills through the trees. The main play for our pros on this card will be the big hyzer and then try and putt for two up the hill. Very uh, dangerous putt, putting area. Yeah, you do see a lot of rollaways on this uh, on this hole in particular. Oh, catches himself after a uh, uncomfortable run up. It looks like. Gonna give it another shot here. Oh, and that is much better. And he's gonna like that. He might get all the way around those trees. Oh yeah, he's gonna have a look for two. Yep, there he is on the back side of the basket with that pro play we were talking about here. I'm sure Landon's going to try and follow suit. Oh, that's not good. God. Mm. Oh, clips the tree. Yeah, it hugs it just way too close to the right side there and uh, cuts off a couple branches, making that tree a little easier for the next guy, though. Let's see if Mango can put it on the hillside down there. And low, and he turns it out. Another mango turnover. Yep, and he is going to end up probably only 60 feet or so from the basket, maybe 70 feet, but he is well underneath it. Ended up much better than it looked out of the hand. Mm -hmm. Another forehand roller. Look at that. And if it has the right angle, it would go all the way up the... Oh, it dies out on those uh, dead pine needles there. The Ranvil flick from Landon. Oh, that's going. Oh, the tree saves Good it. up, buddy. Mm -hmm. Kept that's it up on the hillside. That could have skipped way down. Yeah, yeah. He'll probably only be 10 feet from the basket right there. Ooh, and a nice upshot from Mango. Sits down on top of that little plateau. Yeah, look at that. Manages to avoid bouncing off those rocks, thankfully. Wow. Ooh, and that tree is going to save Ryan from coasting all the way down the hill. Oh. Unable to convert. Almost on the hard bird. Yeah, the, luckily that top side of the disc fell pretty quick, so he's going to be up there on the plateau. You can see me trying to uh, not fall off the ledge using that tree as some extra support there while Ryan taps out for his par. Followed by Linda. Three for Mo. And we'll see Mango cleaning up the par party here for the feature card. There we go. After hole 13, we are seeing a par party for the group. Uh, not, not what you want, but not a bad play there for hole three. That is an easy spot to pick up few extra strokes if you mess up that putt. Hole 14 is a 345-foot par 3. You can see me down there trying to pilot the drone. Um, it's really just a big forehand or backhand hyzer play out uh, over and around the trees, and uh, anything should crash you back down onto the green here. And hopefully you can stick the landing and not roll downwards on that sloped green. Not too sloped, but... Uh, just a little bit of an angle there for you. Over. Ooh, Mo puts it up high. Catches some branches, and he's going to be edge of the circle. Just a bit inside. Edge of the rock circle around the basket, which is about like 20 to 25 feet. Here's Landon 
doing something similar. Still high. Highs are out. Oh! Ooh. That was nice. Gets through the tree, and he's going to be down there. Maybe 10, 15 feet from the basket at most. Mango with the predator. Another mango turnover, but that predator hits stable. Yep, it fights back for him, and he's going to have a long look at the basket. And looks like Ryan's going to go with the forehand hides around and take the other way around the trees. And it, oh, oh, well, it was a little far, probably just at the edge of the circle there. Mango with a low ceiling here. Oh, and that is a smart play, laying up gently. That spin punt could have ended up taking him 45 feet past the basket the way it slopes down right there. Oh man, Ryan catches in a nice bird there. Great putt. Looks like we're going to see it a second time on this round's cash cam. Ryan lining up out there, just probably 30, 35 feet at the very most. And he is just going to put it there on the weak side of the basket for a left-handed player. But uh, sits in there nice and easy for him. Moe's going to take home a bird as well from a little bit closer. A third bird for Mortensen. That is three out of four. And Mango is going to tap in his solo par here. Oh, you're okay. But smart play given uh, where he was positioned for his birdie look. After hole 14, we've got three birdies and a single par. Mango's going to move to the, uh, or stay at the bottom of the lineup here. On to hole 15, a short 240 foot par 3. You either throw a backhand putter up the middle or flick approach disc around the outside. Must birdie hole for our, our pros on this card. Yeah, definitely a must birdie hole. Similar to hole 1, this is one that almost anybody should be looking at a birdie. See how close Mo can get here. You don't need to try. Oh! oh. He gives it a good little ace run. You can see he's disappointed that he is not in the basket. That was very close. Yeah, that was a great throw. Oof, a little beefy for landing. I said thumber. It's going to be short. That's true. It would have been better if it was closer to the basket and stuff. I mean, he's not wrong. Put it closer to the basket. That's always good advice. That's in. Oh, it looks and like does he's... just that. Yeah, takes his own advice and uh, parks it right there. See, Landon, it's that easy. Mango going with uh, his trusty Envy. The card behind me had John Youngbar on it and Nick Walter, who nailed the basket. Inches from an ace. Ooh. Yeah, you see a lot of ace runs here on hole 15. It is uh, easy to get, but also hard to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just inside lots of players' range, and it's uh, fun to see people give really fun runs at it. Also fun to watch Landon now uh, mess up easy birdie putts. He's going to be taking a three here, folks. Let's see if uh, Mango can get a two, though. Pick up a stroke on the kid here, who is well out in the lead from him. Mm. That's two. Nice job there, Mango. A little, uh, little gratuitous on the warm-ups for a 15-footer, but if it works, it works. A little Nico the Castro-esque. Mm-hmm. Oh, and that's a nice birdie. And that's a nice birdie. Same score with a uh, little bit of moving around here after hole 15. Three birdies in a par with Mortensen taking the only par. On to hole 16, we have the Rehan Bros with another hole breakdown. Here we are, guys. Hole 16, what we'll be playing is our hole 17 for the tournament at Tom Pierce Park, signature hole. When you look out, you're wondering, where's the basket? It's going to be behind this bridge, which plays as a mando. You have two options. You either make it through the keyholes over the top, or you go underneath the arches. 
You're gonna see all kinds of plays here. You're gonna see backhands trying to get around the corner. You're gonna see forehand rollers trying to get around the corner. You're gonna, you're gonna have all the options, but you must play. All right guys, so let's say you got lucky. You rolled your disc all the way down here and you've got a shot for a two. Reality, you barely got through here. You're throwing your up shot. And you're probably gonna tap in for three. Thanks guys. All right, we've got Mo going hot with a big forehand roller. Gets right through that Mando. Oh man, he is down in the creek. Gonna be looking at a play for bird there. That's a great shot. Yeah, this is definitely a bonus birdie if you can get it. Oh, and he's through too with a forehand roller. Cuts a little harder. Uh, we can confirm that he did not touch the cameraman in any way. We do have a spotter here on this hole. Our good, do good buddy Palmdale was out there watching for everybody since he was not able to participate himself this weekend. Tough to sit out with an injury, but mm -hmm. He'll definitely be back doing, out there. doing all he could to help. Yep. Oh, 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 looks like Mango almost wow. jumped through the keyhole. Yep, there you can see him. And uh, Landon's going to go with the forehand roller as well. Ah, and he uh, puts it right into the wall. That looks about like what my forehand roller looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a hard throw. I do not have one in my bag whatsoever. Oh, great approach from Mango from underneath the Mando. And he's going to have pretty much a tap in there for his par. Come on. Oh. Oh, that's not very fun at Unfortunate all. skip there. Yeah, I don't even know if Landon can see the basket there despite being inside the first circle. Oh, Ryan run. gives it a run from outside there. He wanted that. That's mm -hmm. a stroke on most players. Oh, and so did Mo, but he is not able to convert on that two. And he's going to be looking at a three from pretty much the same exact spot as Ryan. Oh, and Landon doesn't oh, even no. press the little ledge. And he's going to be putting for four from on top of the rocks. Woo, nice three from Mango. Which honestly feels like a bird here with that tough Mando. Oh! <laughs> Ooh, gonna turn that into a five there, Linda. Ryan for three. Oh yeah, that was good. And here's Mo from, yep, see, almost the exact same spot. Could have even shared a marker. And there we go. Three for Mo. And, uh, yep, a five. It could have very easily turned into a six there for the last second for Landon. Was not paying attention. Mm -mm. At the end of hole 16, we've got three pars and unfortunately a purple double bogey for Linda. Moving on to hole 17, our longest hole on the course today. About 546 foot par four. Wide open, off the tee for about 400 feet and then plenty of guardian trees around the basket. It is rumored that Greg Barsby has eagled this hole after throwing a roller that got right down by the basket. Yeah, that was actually in tournament play. I'm not sure what year or what tournament that was, but I've heard that from every local ever. Uh, here's Mo uh, ripping one out there. No. Little nose up. He's thumping out. Yeah, and he's going to be just inside the bushes, I think, right there on the left side of the fairway. But not a bad play. He's just going to have an up and over for a look for Bird. Brian ripping another wow. forehand. That is so far for how low that was. Look at that. And he is going to have just a pretty maybe 130, 140 foot look at the basket. Just got to get through some trees there. He is way up there for a forehand. That is so impressive. Mm -hmm. Very far. Mango going to go with the big roller here. I believe he's throwing a champion beast. Oh, come on, oh. Oh. Looks like it cut out a little early. Yeah, caught a weird angle and cuts all the way across to the left side of the fairway. Landon calling his shot like Babe Ruth over here. I have seen Landon land within 30 feet of this basket. Actually, two days before this, in one of his practice rounds, he eagled it. None of us were there to film it, but his little brother Valen did confirm that he did do it. Did not do it there. No, not at all. Not even close. Well, he can still throw it in, but 
Yeah, you can definitely get a bird still. Not inside circle one with the tee shot. Mm -mm. Oh. Oh, and that could have been really good, but he's going to be left with uh, 50 feet or so there. Oh, Landon goes Thummer, I think, over the top. Yeah, that's how that looks. Oh, and he sticks it inside the circle. And uh, we did not get a throw cam on this, but this is Moe's disc trying to come up over the top. He gets it all Good the way fine. down there, and he is parked for his birdie. That's a great shot, especially back in those bushes where he was at. Uh -huh. He had absolutely no look at the basket from back there. He was able to get it all the way down to Park City. Ooh, just like Ryan. Skids it on up there, looking at a very easy tap in for his bird. Mango looking like he wants to run this. Ooh! Just short. Yeah, just kicks it off. Um, right around here is where we did experience some technical difficulties with one of our cameras uh, just kind of overheating on us. So for the last couple holes here, you will see we are down to just two cameras. Uh, we have done our best to cut together some uh, viewable footage and still get to the end of this round. And you see Landon tapping out his par there. Mo going with his bird after a fantastic upshot. Ryan after a killer driving up shot with his birdie. And Mango's able to scramble for a par. At the end of hole 17, our penultimate hole here in the first round, we are looking at two birdies and two pars. Let's see what the boys can do to finish out. Hole 18, 280 foot par three, played through the short pin position today. You will see on the flyover, it is gonna be flying towards the long position. The short position is up where you see Jesse running along, just probably 15 feet to the left of him there, passing over it just about now. Uh, it's just a big forehand hyzer route, pretty easy to get a bird on, but uh, there are quite a bit of trees on either side of the fairway that you can get caught up in if you're not careful. Oh, goes big forehand hyzer. He's going to have a nice look for a bird there. The signature hole on the course is 16, but I love 18 in the long position where it finishes right by the water where the river runs through. Mm -hmm. I believe we got to see that in the second round, so we will get to uh, that is a very fun pin position. I do wish it would have been there for both rounds of this tournament, but this short hole does make for a lot of really fun birdie runs like we just saw from Ryan. Oh, and one for Mango, too. Nice way to finish out their round. Going to have tap-ins for birds from both of those guys. Let's see if Landon can join the club here. Maybe get us a star frame on the last hole. Would love to see the graphic. Oh. Landon does not look happy. Yeah. Rises out way early. And he is probably 60 feet away. It is one of those putts, though, that's just inside of Landon's, like, Weird little special range he's got. Oh, but, uh, not on target. Way yeah. past the basket, too. He rushed that one. Rushed that one, too, but Ken's the 30-footer. Not bad. Manages to get a par still, despite uh, flubbing that drive. So, not a terrible way to end his round. Going to see a bird from Mo to finish seven birdies through nine holes here. Impressive. What an incredible back nine. Mm -hmm. Mango taking his bird there to tie him up with Landon. And Ryan's gonna pull ahead of both of them by one stroke with that birdie right there. There you have it folks, three birdies and a par. After the first round, Mo walks away king of the feature card with an impressive score of seven under, followed by Ryan with a minus five, and biggest boys Linda and Mango both holding down a neck four. Man, seven birdies and nine holes for Mo. That's quite a run. I'm sure he'll earn a nice spot on the leaderboard after that performance. Before we check in on the rest of the NPO scores, let's head down to Kerm on the course for a special post-round interview. Thanks so much guys, here with Landon after his first round finish. Landon, how did you think you did? Um, definitely left a bunch out there. Gonna come back and get all the ones I didn't get. Definitely did leave a lot out there, tied and bumped out of the chase card. That's gotta be disappointing. No, I'm coming back from third card, getting the top three. 
uh, pretty simple. We have some trash players out here. Um, what are they like? Nine, nine forty rated? Yeah, I'm, I'm like nine eighty rated, so I'm like so good. Uh, Can't yeah. argue with that math. Yeah, so like nine plus ten is twelve. But um, yeah, just gonna come out there and uh, get the dub. <clears throat> Strong it, words from Landon. We'll find out if he can follow through. Back to Top you guys. Four. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kerm. Those are some bold words from Landon. I think he may want to work on his interview skills before Sows. You'll be able to see Linda along with Mango and Ryan on our round two chase card coverage. And taking a look at the top of the leaderboard, we saw that Robert Pena, also known as LP3, shot 11 under in the first round, which ended up being rated 1042. So we will definitely be watching him play on the lead card in round two, alongside Mo, who is sitting tied for third place after an impressive run with seven birdies here in the back nine. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what LP3 can do with all that momentum heading into the second round. 11 under is absolutely insane. I feel like we are going to get to watch some amazing disc golf. Make sure to tune in to both our lead and chase card coverage of the second round. We'd like to give a special shout out to tournament director Austin Dimmick for helping get this coverage set up and for putting on a fantastic event here in Southern Oregon. And we'd like to once again thank our sponsor, AGL Discs, for providing this coverage for you folks at home. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Big Disc Boys. And if you liked our coverage, please smash that subscribe button and notification bell so you can make sure to catch all our future videos. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Jesse. This is Cam. We are the Big Disc Boys, and we will see you in the second round. Oh, yeah. Perfect.